truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Should I be upset that I didn't fulfill all three conditions? Maybe I didn't get the whole truth. Two out of three isn't so bad. Well, life goes on. Karen, my wife, is an aspiring investment manager and is well positioned to replace her father, Lou, when he retires at the end of the year. Lou has spent the last 30 years managing a multi-billion dollar pension fund for a government organization. The committee considered Lou's successors and, with Lou's input, chose Karen and one other person. Lou is a pompous ass. We've never gotten along. He's loudmouthed and thinks very little of my career. The less time I spend around him, the happier I am. When we got engaged, Lou was the one who drew up the prenup with the harshest penalties. Basically, if there's adultery involved, you're left in the shadows. If there are children involved, it gets even worse. There's a child support formula as well. None of this made me the least bit uncomfortable as fidelity means a lot to me. My name is Larry Trumpier. Karen and I were both 29 years old when we met at a conference just under three years ago. I work for a company that creates and manages limited partnerships. Karen works for a company that provides investment advice. On the day of the conference, Karen was giving a presentation on the tax advantages of some new investment products. At the dinner that followed, Karen and her colleague, Sasha, joined me at the table. Both ladies were very flirty, and we decided to go dancing after dinner. We walked into a nightclub called Spread Your Wings. I enjoyed the company of both of them on the dance floor, but after a while, it was Karen who started demanding me to join her. I didn't mind, of course, as either of them would have made me happy. Karen was certainly the driving force behind our courtship. Not two weeks after we met, my nights turned into something I had only dreamed of. It was Friday, and as I was coming home from work, Karen met me at my house. Let's skip dinner and spend the evening at your place, she said. Once inside, she sat me down on the couch and gave me a very erotic strip tease. Nice. I hit the jackpot. I helped her to her feet, and she led me into the bedroom. I tried to give her as much pleasure as she had just given me. We repeated that Friday night once or twice a week until our marriage began to falter. There was more to our relationship than sex. Like the night Karen had possessed me, the parties we attended were very possessive of her. In her line of work, the parties were weekly. She made it clear that she did not like to attend them alone. The men, she said, were constantly making rude remarks and hurting her feelings. When we weren't attending parties, we were out to dinner, dancing, or just spending time together. Until the very end, we hardly spent any time away from each other. It was a first marriage for each of us. Lou threw a grand extravaganza for his baby girl. Most of Karen's paycheck depended on her commissions, while my paycheck provided for us during the first year. We started saving for a house about six months before the end. Karen landed several large contracts, and her bonuses became large. She continued to succeed, but her behavior also changed before my eyes. She was turning into Lou suddenly, I wasn't as good a partner as I used to be. Along with their success at work, Karen and Sasha, who was still single, started having bachelorette parties. They did this about once a month. They loved to dance at Spread Your Wings, or we had danced when we met. The last few times, Karen had come home pretty drunk and in disheveled clothes. I was beginning to doubt her fidelity. At a recent family reunion, Lou drank too much and hurled insults at just about everyone. I left Karen with the car and hitched a ride home. When she got home, she was more than annoyed. I told her to get over it, after all, he is her father, and if he can't act civil, I won't spend time around him. Not a week later, I had a seminar at a downtown hotel. During a break, as I was checking in at the office, I saw Lou enter the elevator. It probably wasn't a big deal, but the more I thought about it, the more ominous it seemed to me. One of my friends from work has a brother who is an investigative reporter. He suggested I do a quick background check on Lou turns out Lou likes to spend his fortune on escort services. I gave the investigator a nice tip. Next time that asshole comes after me, I'll tell him this. 
There were a few break-ins in houses in our neighborhood. I asked the owner if I could hook up one of those porch motion detectors. He said yes, and I installed it. When triggered, it took a short video and, using our Wi-Fi connection, sent an alert to an app on my phone. Karen went shopping while I was installing it. I tried to show it to her when she got home, but she waved me off, saying she had to get ready for her bachelorette party. I told Karen it was time to call it a day with girls' night out. We didn't fight about it, but the argument was heated. She wasn't interested. We exchanged phrases. I said that her need to go to dances was not what a married woman should do. She dismissed it as a normal pastime away from me. You're jumping to conclusions, and it's not what you think it is, she remarked dismissively. Around 7 in the evening, Sasha came in wearing jeans, and Karen, wearing a dress, left without saying anything. I decided to stop by to see how Karen behaved during the night out. Friday nights were very popular at Spread Your Wings. Finding a parking spot was the first problem. It was so crowded that I had to stand far away from the dance floor. It took a while to find Karen on the dance floor, and I wasn't thrilled with what I saw. She was pressed up against a guy, and one of his hands was squeezing her breasts, while the other was resting comfortably on her ass. After the song ended, I watched as they headed to their table. Sasha and some guy took the chairs next to each other. At least by wearing jeans, Sasha was making it harder for the guy to invade her territory. Karen and her boyfriend put their chairs next to each other. All four seemed to have at least one hand under the table. Karen's boyfriend raised his hand and said something to Karen. She snuggled up to him again. I sent a text, I've seen enough. Get a room. I'm going home to pack. I left and was on my way home when I got a text back, packing what? I'm moving. A minute later, Karen's ringtone came on my phone. What the hell does all this mean? From what I saw tonight, it's not a matter of if you're going to change, it's a matter of when. I'm guessing it's already happened, judging by the way you acted tonight. Nothing has happened, not tonight. You're jumping to conclusions, and it's not what you think. Well, his fingers were dry before they went under the table. They weren't dry when I saw them again. There was nothing of the sort. You are very much mistaken. I can't think of an explanation why your hands were never on the table either. I need to be with you now. I didn't do anything wrong. It was harmless flirting. You're jumping to conclusions, and it's not what you think. When my wife has to flirt with strangers to feel like a woman, it's time for me to consider whether it's worth getting married at all. It's not like that. I haven't done anything wrong. What you did didn't pass the marital sniff test. It's not going anywhere. At least I'm spending the next few nights in a motel. I'll be in touch. I hung up. Parking in front of our house, I had only packed for a few days. I figured I could go back to the apartment in a day or two and grab more clothes. As I waited at a stoplight to turn onto the highway, my phone buzzed. Someone was standing on my porch. I glanced up, it was Karen. Karen's ringtone again. Are you really staying at the motel? On my way. You didn't have to rush home. I didn't want to torment your conscience, or, dude, leaving him like that. Wait, maybe you had time to finish him off. F you, nothing happened. You're jumping to conclusions, and it's not what you think. I wonder why he was sniffing his fingers. There was nothing of the sort. Well, since you refuse to be honest, we're done. Good night. I turned my phone off. A few blocks from where I was working, I found one of those places to stay for a week. I paid for the week and settled into my room. I can't say it was a good night's sleep, but a little sleep was better than no sleep. Almost with dread, I turned on my cell phone. As expected, several voicemails and texts arrived, all proving her complete innocence and my misguided imagination. I texted her, how about a lie detector test? I'm getting tested for STDs today. Her reply took some time and was evasive. 
Spend as much money as you want on the tests. Great. When do you want to take a lie detector test? I didn't say I wanted one. Sasha says they're no better than flipping a coin. Okay, I flipped a coin. Heads, you cheat. Tails, you're honest. Oh no, heads up. I can't believe you think that. All I did was go dancing. You're jumping to conclusions, and it's not what you think. Your body should be off limits. What I saw last night was not taboo. It wasn't like that. I don't want to keep living like that. That's why I moved out. I think we should try to break up. There were no calls or texts from Karen for the rest of the day. Imagine my surprise when, around 7 p.m., a porch video showed Karen leaving an address. Around 10 p.m., another porch video showed Karen coming home. She was accompanied by a boyfriend who also entered the apartment. He left about 30 minutes later. Maybe they were watching the 10 o'clock news. I knew the marriage was over, but I really needed to get proof for the prenup. I spent Sunday looking for a supplier of bedroom surveillance equipment. After the purchase, I decided to take a long lunch on Monday and install it. Good thing it's so close to work, an extra half hour to eat and get ready in the morning. At lunchtime, I went back to the apartment, gathered some financial paperwork, grabbed a couple of suitcases of clothes, and packed the rest of my bathroom stuff. The camera in the bedroom connected to the ceiling light fixture pretty easily. Via Wi-Fi, it uploaded to the cloud. That night, I got a text, I see you stopped by. Ready to talk yet? As soon as I get the results of your lie detector test. That was it, no texting that night. The rest of the week went smoothly, and work was more productive than usual. On Friday, I extended my stay here for another week. Around 7 p.m., a video phone buzzed on the porch. Sasha showed up in jeans, and Karen headed out in a dress. Saturday morning, I reviewed the video from the porch. Like the previous week, Karen came back around 10 p.m., but with a different guy than the previous week. He left about 30 minutes later. I logged in and watched the uploaded bedroom video. I had everything I needed for an uncontested divorce. Karen was nearly naked when she entered the bedroom, and the guy wasted no time undressing. That's it, B, I muttered. Karen opened the nightstand and pulled out a condom, but he knocked it out of her hands. I don't play unless it's safe. Tough ass, honey. Skin on skin for me, baby. He pulled her to the middle of the bed and cradled her arms. No wonder she needed a lover. I could clearly see I'd been doing it all wrong all along. All that kissing and foreplay had gone to waste. Karen's sex buddy came out of the bathroom and quickly got dressed. She didn't say anything and sat back, covering her breasts. Once dressed, he pulled out his wallet and tossed two bills on the bed. See you again at Wings. Karen picked up the bills and examined them for a while, then turned on the dude. What the hell is this? I'm not a thing whore, asshole. Take your thing money and get out of here. You're a pathetic loser. Karen tossed him the bills. He took them and picked them up. No problem, B. You weren't even half worth it. You need to sign up for sex lessons. He disappeared from the bedroom. Karen picked up a pillow and slammed it on the bed 20 times before tossing it across the room. I almost felt sorry for her. Who was I trying to fool? I couldn't have been happier with this outcome. I guess Karen would have a hard time convincing me that I had misinterpreted everything. I rewatched the video over and over again. It occurred to me that if someone ended the video at the point where Karen was holding the two bills, they might get the wrong impression of what happened. Isn't it great that in this day and age, there are all kinds of video editing tools available? The end product turned out just perfect. This revenge was beyond my wildest dreams. I had to go back to the apartment to get all the email addresses needed for the ambush. A few days later, I went for a long lunch and found everything I needed. I didn't need the camera in the bedroom anymore, so I put it away. 
Friday night, around 6 o'clock, I knocked on Karen's door. Well, look who decided to grace me with her presence. To what do I owe this pleasure? It's your house. You didn't need to know. Karen, I've decided I don't need a lie detector test anymore. Larry, you never needed one. Ready to talk, Karen? Have a seat. I have something you'll want to see. It's all taken care of, so consider it a fait accompli. As you know, this is still my apartment. I had every right to install cameras. Since the video was shot in my apartment with my equipment, I also have the right to share it with anyone. I'm so anxious for you to see it, and then I'll tell you who I shared it with. Karen's smirk was replaced by a strange look that was mostly panic mixed with terror. I clicked the replay arrow. What the f is this? You had no right. When the video ended, she really got in my face. Where is the rest of the video? It didn't end that way, you thing asshole. Karen, your answer tells me everything I need to know about our marriage. No I'm sorry or I didn't mean to hurt you or anything like that. No remorse. Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, and it's not what I think it is, but it sounds like you were being paid for sex. Sort of like a prostitute. Where did I go wrong? Where is the rest of the video? I'm not a prostitute. I gave him his money back. Well, from what I saw, you probably overcharged anyway. How much did you get? Two tens? F you. Those were $100 bills. Wow, you're an expensive prostitute. I guess things are going pretty well at Wings, huh? Am I jumping to conclusions again? You're a thing asshole. I'm not a hooker. Actually, whore, you are a whore. This was taken last weekend. You were married and had sex with someone other than your husband. That makes you a whore, whether you were paid or not. Like I said, I already did what I was going to do. She tried to snatch the phone from me, but I managed to keep her at bay. Give me the video. You have no right. You can't share it with anyone. Well, let's talk about who I shared it with. I was concerned that people might think I was your pimp, so I sent a copy to the sheriff with a note expressing my deep concern that your prostitution might have negative consequences for me. I have volunteered to testify as a witness for the state. I hope they won't jump to conclusions. You did what? I'm not a prostitute. It's not what it looks like. Let's move on, I said, ignoring her pleas. Your asshole father uses prostitutes. I have an investigator's report that proves it. I sent that report in this video to both him and your mother. If you don't mind, I figured dad has no problem paying for sex, so maybe they should know what's going on in the family. The panic and terror on Karen's face deepened, her eyes wide, her nostrils flaring as she clenched her fists in frustration. I hate you. You're the biggest piece of s I've ever met. Oh, that's what I was going to tell you. Great minds think alike. Why? Why would you want to bring them into this? This is between you and me. If I had videotapes of all those assholes you slept with, I'd give them to their wives too. But let's get on with it. I also sent the investment committee this video and the report on your father. I suppose they'll have time to study them before they decide on a new manager. Oh, God. Karen collapsed to the floor. Tears streamed down her face, the realization hitting her hard. It took a while, but the tears finally started, I said coldly. Karen, thanks to Lou, it looks like all of my savings and checking account money will stay with me. My attorney has instructed the bank to freeze those accounts. Besides, thanks to your bargaining skills, you'll owe me alimony. Thanks, sweetheart. I walked to the front door and invited the bailiff in. He touched her shoulder gently and handed her a legal document. Karen Trumpier, you've been served with a summons, the bailiff said. Karen stared blankly at the paper in her hands, shaking her head in disbelief. It's not what it looks like. There's more to the video. You can't do this to me. 
You had no right, she cried, her voice cracking. I know, Karen. I always jump to conclusions, and I'm just too stupid to realize that things aren't what they seem, I said sarcastically. Hey, if you hurry up and clean yourself up, you'll still have time to get to Wings and find another John for tonight. F you, she screamed through her sobs. Yeah, but the payback is very satisfying. Have a nice life, slut, I said with a smug grin as I turned to leave. I wonder how that video will look online. No. You can't. Please don't. Karen begged, her voice breaking with desperation. Please, please don't. We'll see, I replied coldly. Maybe if you're a good little whore and don't contest the divorce. As I walked out the door, I saw Sasha walking down the hallway toward the apartment. Hey, Sasha, you're looking good, I said with a smirk. Sasha glanced at me, then at Karen, who was still sobbing on the floor. She said nothing, but the tension in the air was palpable. A few days later, I received a call from the sheriff. They had spoken with Karen, but since there was no explicit offer to exchange sex for money, no charges would be filed. They did warn her that they would be watching her actions closely. As for Lou, he didn't have to wait until the end of the year to retire. He was fired. It seemed like he was living in a motel now. Karen's mom must have jumped to conclusions about his whoremongering. Karen's hopes and dreams of replacing her father as managing director had gone to waste. A simple thank you came from the investment committee, we have decided to proceed in a different direction. I got a text from Sasha a few days later, when this is over, would you like to go dancing? Just as long as it's not at wings, I replied. When the court ordered the divorce, I got all the money, and they approved alimony. I had won, and Karen had lost everything. The revenge had played out perfectly. After the divorce was finalized, I couldn't resist one final blow. I sent Karen an anonymous copy of the full video. Attached was a note, is it too late to consider this the whole truth?